This is the stage in our relationship where we're incredibly comfortable with each other. We have come to respect and rely on each other. And these people I work with are the people I want to work with. We are doing great shows, making great records, and it's like it's all brand new. Also, we've stopped fantasizing that you know some hotter, younger version of ourselves is gonna show up. That's and we've right. realized, we've come to terms with the phrase, is this all there is? Promote their new their record, new record. Fake, fake nudes. You know, to me, when we started this tour, it was kind of the release of the new record. Yeah, I felt um, like that. But, you know, playing last night at the Commodore and the incredible energy in that room, and I really sort of treated it like a celebration of the record finally being released. Plus the fact, you know, we started recording in January, so it seems like... We've lived with the tunes for a long time. But what happened was we finished the album and we kind of put it away because we were on tour still. We were working and we weren't about to play all these brand new songs. Kind of, we were able to put it aside for a little while and then come back to it with uh, with fresh ears almost when we started playing it live. I feel like a lightning strike every time I rock the mic. You can join me if you like or all on my own. I'm looking around. That initial uh, Gordon tour so imprinted on all of us because it was our first huge tour. I've been thinking a ton about that tour. You know, getting out across Canada again, doing a more extensive Canadian tour than we've done in over 15 years. Uh, it's made me think a lot about that first Canadian tour where we did 70 plus dates in Canada. When we were so huge in Canada in the beginning, we, we didn't understand why it wasn't just immediately translating into America. We were playing to 14,000 people in London, Ontario, and then we were driving 20 minutes west and playing to 400 people in Detroit. All people knew about us down there was that we were entertaining and energetic and we had fun songs, and uh, that really took a long time to to grow from this grassroots live audience to you know bigger and bigger halls to the radio to TV and that was a good 10 year build easily yeah, it was whereas in Canada we came out of the out of the gate and we were huge suddenly I just feel like I walk up on stage as a blank slate confident that the show is going to be at least really good you know, like I know it's gonna be really good and it might be great or exceptional if things just happen to click. But that kind of alchemy is a night to night thing. But I know that we're, we're so competent and confident in what we do now that the base level is like really high. So that's a great feeling. There's a lot of good energy on the record, and so we can go into a song like Looking Up uh, or Bringing It Home um, and... Put it beside One Week or something? Yeah, it may not be familiar to people, but it's the energy is so good and we're having so much fun playing it that I think it's infectious. Those songs have just seamlessly become a part of the live set. Uh, it's nice to be able to try that stuff out on, like, towns across Canada.
I said, hey, we should get a record player. I think that suggestion has been going for about 10 years. Well, I think I've been <laughs> suggesting it for about 10 years. Yeah. Our sound man, Robin, used to bring a record player, and we used to DJ a little bit before the show. But, uh, you know, it's something so nice to do when you're on tour is to find used record shops. And Ed went out and actually bought a turntable. And uh, now he's hooked. <laughs> Maybe pinball machines will take a back seat now and he'll have like tw tw 20 record players. It's nice to be taken care of every so often on the road, whether that's a nice haircut or a beard trim or a massage or like a pedicure. Like daily, we find good coffee. And about every week and a half, we text each other, hey, good barbershop here. Record shops, art galleries, art museums. There's a wonderful Inuit um, art gallery, and they sell a lot of the prints and drawings of artists I like, particularly from Cape Dorset. So I was keen to go in there and check it out. I'm hoping to do some running. I just like to go out and smell the flowers. That's kind of why I go out. But, um, you know, it's all about forgiveness. I don't kill myself if I didn't do the yoga routine that day. And, you know, I forgive you. He's, he's a great source of forgiveness. Thank you, Kevin. 30 years is a heck of a milestone, but our career is like in chunks. There was pre-Gordon and that scrappy sort of van touring thing. And then Gordon exploded in Canada and there was the huge in Canada stage. That went away and working our asses off to build in America. Boom, things exploded in America and that was a long chunk of time. We parted ways with Steve and there was a transition phase where we were figuring out what we could do as a four piece. I feel like we're really just hitting our stride. So fake nudes, I, I feel like we've really arrived. We just put out two records and we're touring harder than we ever have. That's a great thing to do on your 30th. Instead of just reflecting on everything we've done and, and putting out some sort of retrospective or whatever, I'm excited that we're just moving forward and yeah. feeling good. Yeah, what's the next thing? Yeah.